Wait. Nice. <laughs> a month from the ball. And this is when I start making the dress. I was actually a little bit um, embarrassed for not having time, but honestly, who cares? I, I have a busy life and it's been not easy lately. <laughs> and, um, and this is it. I don't have the same free time that I had before. And I was embarrassed to share uh, the journey with my dress because, I don't know, it felt like everybody already had a ball gown going. But then, uh, being part of this amazing community and actually taking the time to see what everybody was creating, I went to the uh, Facebook uh, group for the ball and I realized that well, actually, a lot of us also had a very busy time and they couldn't uh, create the ball gowns before, uh, beforehand. And there's a fair amount of people on the same boat that I am right now that we're creating this ball, <laughs> we're creating a ball gown in less than a month. So traditionally, a ball gown would have lots of hands involved and lots of time as well people would at least from brazil people would um commission these gowns in europe uh, months ahead of the season sometimes even a, a year ahead of time especially worth um, in the worth maison so doing that doing that in less than a month alone uh with no time well <laughs> Let me just say that I'm not gonna do uh, the historical way. I'm probably not gonna use my hand crank machine, but I'm gonna do in a very good mix of techniques. Part one, making a mannequin of your body with polyfill project fleece. Petting your mannequin to the right proportion sounds intimidating, but it's not. All you need to do is to pad a lot, lots of pins, and have patience. But before you start, you need to do a little research. What is the silhouette of the period that you want to create? You may be tempted to just say Victorian, Edwardian, but even within those periods, the silhouette changes drastically. So pick an ear or any specific dress that you want to create and stick to it. I'm basing my silhouette by the theme of the ball. We're doing Gilded Age, so I think it's a general consensus that the House of Worth is one of the most famous couture houses of the period. So that means I'll be wearing a corset. Everybody is different, but generally, with that kind of period garment, your body tends to stand in, in a specific way. Knowing the silhouette that I want to achieve, knowing what corset I'll be wearing and what will be my body fat and what will be extra padding, I can pad this mannequin to my exact measurements. Some people on Instagram expressed interest on a tutorial on how to pad a mannequin step by step. Would that be interesting? Let me know in the comments. For this specific one, I'm concentrating more of the body fat on the lower part of the body, uh, my badaka dunk, and on the top part of the back, creating this uh, S bend curve that is very famous. Pretty much all you need to do is to add padding until you get to your measurements. Traditionally, I would baste and secure all the padding in place and then cover with fabric. But since it's the only small mannequin I have, I'll be ripping this off Monday. Ready for part two? Understanding the cut. You will need a petticoat, tape, or ribbon. This is roughly the design that I'm going for. It is one of the most recreated ball styles of the period. There are many dresses with this wraparound front. I inspected several dresses and studied their insides to create this pattern that will fit my body perfectly. 
I'll be using this vintage fabric that I got in Chicago. Yellow was also one of the most popular colors of the period. And during last fall, I went to Milwaukee Museum with my friend Lauren, and we were able to see original posters of Jules Chahut. And I got seriously inspired by his yellow ballerinas. What you see here is me planning the cut. Every blue line you see is going to be a cut in the fabric. I'm also marking the center front and some meridian lines that will help me in the future. In haute couture, I will use black ribbon and pin it in place. This is the actual speed that I do. And this is the fast one. <laughs> Part 3. Making the drape with Sharpie. You will also need party tablecloth or fabric. Quick flex, this orchid that I found in the trash is back blooming. Remember when I said that I was going to use modern techniques? This is it. In the traditional technique, you should use a fabric that mimics your fabric to do the moulage. Not necessarily muslin. If you're using satin, you should also use satin for your moulage. And if you're using voile, you should also use the voile for this. The more precise, the better. It's going to make it easier to make your pattern. However, I'm cheap, so I'm using this party tablecloth. I'm also a professional draper, so I know this works, <laughs> trust me. Being a draper means that I make patterns from scratch. On the traditional technique, I would transfer this pencil fabric to paper and then correct all these wobbly lines. If my pattern were to be used by a shop or being delivered to a client, I would do so. But since it's just for me, because of my experience, I can eliminate this extra step and do all corrections by eye when cutting the fabric. More experienced drapers will drape directly on the finished fabric, but since I'm using a vintage fabric that I have a very limited amount, I want to still be careful. Also, to be on the safe side, I label everything and I also create markings where the seams should meet. The easiest way to create the famous front is to drape on the client's body. It needs to be on bias and tight enough so the folds will stay put. The more complex the drape, the more identification marks are used. The blue pieces will be cut two times. The red one would only be cut one because I'm not doing both sides of the front. Now let's go for the back. Also, if you stayed until now, cheers. Most people don't have this span of attention. And this is how the back looks. I'm very happy with this. And with that, the bodice is done. Let's go for the skirt. I'm creating the folds in the back and the length of the train. There are many skirt patterns on the internet, so please appreciate my mom giving me a pep talk. And again, this skirt is based on the worth skirt of five pieces. I've seen dresses that the center front had cut. This one will not be necessary. I'm making sure that everything is very smooth on the hips and then just naturally flowing to the ground. And this is the finished piece. Sadly, this week, Don Juan is a little bit under the weather, so we're not going to be making him a duo of my dress, but maybe next time. Are you upset with me? Don't be upset. It's just for today. Okay? My name is Ayrão Zucchelli. I am a designer, consultant, and researcher of historical garments. And I see you next time.